Hi, Samuel Leeds here, and one of the strategies that myself and my success students are doing really well at the moment is buying properties, but rather than leaving our money in the property, we are adding value to it and then refinancing the property and pulling our money back out, which is a fabulous strategy. Now, the biggest danger in this is that when you try and refinance the property is that it gets downvalued. So on this video, I've got the top five ways to make sure that your surveyor does not downvalue your property Hence meaning that you can pull all or most of your money out. So the five ways to increase your property valuation. The first way is when the valuer goes out to the property, always, 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 always make sure that you go out there too, that you meet the valuer at the property. When you meet him there or her, just be friendly, be nice, dress well, and don't get there and say, what do you think? What do you think? What, what do you think the value is? Because that's what people always do. And it just annoys the valuers. So just get there, be professional, be friendly, build some rapport and be ready to answer questions. That's the first way to make sure that you're onto a good start. Number two, next, is the valuer, they're not stupid. They know what you paid for that house and you probably got it at a little bit of a bargain. So what a lot of people do is they try and hide the fact. They, don't, they might have bought the house really cheap for say 50,000 pounds and now they've spent 20 grand on it, they've put 70,000 in total and they think it's worth 100. But rather than being honest and just saying, you know what, I actually got this really cheap, I bought it for 50,000 and here's why I managed to get it so cheap, here's how it happened. Instead, they just try and hope that the valuer doesn't know how much they paid for it, doesn't research, doesn't find out. Well, they will know exactly what you paid for it. They'll know when you bought it as well. So step number two is to, or tip number two, is just to be honest. Just say, you know what, I actually got this for 50,000 pounds. The reason I managed to get it so cheap is because I bought three off the landlord and he was in a real hurry to move because he had, had some bad tenants and this was the story and I bought all three of them at a little bit of a bargain. Number three, demonstrate and show the valuer exactly what you've done to the property. How have you added so much value? Be ready to show the invoices and the receipts and what you've done. Justify, back up exactly how much value you've added and why you think this property is worth more now than it was when you bought it. Next, number four, this is so, so, so important. You can follow the first three steps so far and you can, you can win the valuer over and you can sense that he's on side and he can be really impressed and he can really like you and in his mind, he might be thinking, yeah, this is worth 100,000 pounds, which is perfect. But then he goes and he views more properties all day back to back and he forgets about you and he forgets about your property. And then he's there at his desk and he's thinking, oh, what, what, what was this one? And he gets mixed up and then bang, he gives you your very low valuation. And you think, what? I was, I was so convinced. So how do you get around that? Before the valuer leaves, what I always do and I really like to do is I make a little pack for him, a little folder, and I put the before and the after pictures, and I put the receipts, I put it all together in a little presentation folder, and I say to him, look, thank you so much for your time, I look forward to hearing from you, please can I leave you with this? Picture of the front of the house on the front with the address, all the pictures before and after, and that way, when he's back in his office thinking, hmm, what was that one again, and what, he's got it right in front of him. That is such a massive tip, I can't even, uh, emphasize how much difference that might make to you being able to revalue your property at a high amount. And lastly, number five, and you might not like this one super much, but it's just prepare for the worst. Prepare for a, a lower valuation than you hoped. The problem with the strategy of buying and then adding value and refinancing is when you're relying on a, a surveyor's opinion, which is effectively what it is. How much is a house worth? Well, a house is worth what someone's prepared to pay for it. It's a subjective figure. And when you're completely banking on someone subjective opinion and if they give you a down valuation you're screwed because you've bought the house on credit cards and just prepare for the worst be realistic and expect the valuer to lower it value than you think. It's easy in property investing to get really carried away, to be really optimistic, and to, to be able to say, well, this, this one sold for this much, therefore the value is definitely gonna value mine off. Prepare for the worst, be conservative. If the figures do not stack up with you leaving some money in, then don't go ahead with a deal in the first place. So there we go. There are the five ways to increase your property valuation and also to make a success of the strategy of buying, refurbishing, and refinancing all of your money out. I hope you found that helpful. Please do comment your thoughts, comments, and experiences below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button right now. I'll see you next time.